Good morning, everyone. Hi. Just getting the little uh, Facebook going here. Okay, so um, so today what we're going to do is a few things. I have many things to do today, so I um, welcome you to join me in checking all this out. And um, we're going to put together some salsa. Actually, I can leave that on there. I'm getting ahead of myself because I have so many things to do. And good morning, everyone. It's so nice to see everybody. Okay, so what we have here is um, we have that I completely forgot to get an onion. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we have tomatoes. We have cilantro, um, some peppers. We have garlic. We have ginger. And I know that you guys have watched me make salsa. Um, for those of you that are, are um, watch my Facebook a lot, um, and thank you for that. It's so awesome to have everybody really uh, joining me every day. It's really cool. Um, but with the Facebook Live, it's, it's kind of casual. You know, if you wanted to get um, real recipes with... Um, you know, I have a couple hundred videos on my YouTube channel with 15-minute healthy meals and recipes. Um, but the Facebook Live is kind of has turned into this great little get-together every morning, and um, and just hang out and watch me do what I do uh, because people seem to want to know um, how I keep making all these healthy meals, and I really try and just stick to simple things like simple methods and simple ways of doing stuff so good morning Jane nice to see you okay so um, well I might as well put some of these things in and so that's garlic garlic of course you know you need lots of garlic in your salsa with the garlic being um, antimicrobial antiviral antibacterial you know garlic can cure just about anything really important to have lots of garlic and i have these tomatoes which are just starting to get a little too soft so i'm just trimming off oh my goodness there's a piece there i don't want um and so i wanted to use these guys up that guy's getting a little bit wrinkly and um yeah i definitely fell behind a bit with the um with <clears throat> doing all the things um after the holiday season um you know i really i really um have been getting busier and busier with my sales um of my teas and my chocolates and my herbal tinctures and custom made uh salves and things like that so i wanted to get ahead of the game and um and get all my uh <laughs> All my 2020 income tax stuff done or at least all my receipts gathered up and organized so I spent the week doing that so I have to say it happens right when you get really busy and you're focused on a job um, especially if it's a job that you don't enjoy doing then uh, you know it's really hard to um, to want to take the time to prepare healthy meals and, uh, and we tend to neglect ourselves when we're super busy like that. And so I did have some vegetables that didn't get used, and these are some of them. Um, mostly, you know, when that kind of thing happens, uh, what's easy is, um, you know, to just grab a handful of, you know, just buy some, some salad greens, right? So buy some of the organic whatever they are, either spinach or baby greens or kale or whatever. And so we ended up eating a lot of salads and, um, you know, something easy like rice and salad and, and uh, that kind of thing. And so, um, so I didn't use up all the vegetables. But, you know, when you grab something quick, try and grab something that's kind of healthy and quick. And, uh, hey, nice. Hi, Kathy. I'm just looking. It's kind of like the comments come in between my background and I'm kind of like, what do I see in front of the celery? <laughs> so so nice to see you here so yeah so I totally get it when you're too busy and you um, you know you just don't want to go to a big 
a bunch of work to uh, to do something healthy. But you know what? Salads and that yeah, that's the other thing that we did was just a stir fry, right? So anything that went into the stir fry, just grab a hand of it a handful of vegetables throw them into the stir fry and it's so super easy um yeah so i didn't do anything too fancy but um i wasn't going to stir fry the tomatoes so here we go we're using the tomatoes okay i am going to keep my fingers crossed that i have an onion in the fridge um, i know i have a lot of onions but i don't have them all where they're supposed to be and um no luck there. <laughs> it figures. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so um, my onions are actually out in the cooler place, which is the house garage. And, um, and so I'm going to add my onions later because I don't want to run around all the way out there and leave you guys for five minutes while I hunt down the onion. Um, or I might do that. You never know. You know what? I am going to do that because I have to have an onion for the next thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, so... I will leave you for a second with the, um, I did wash everything, wash, 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 I, but I, I somehow missed this label, so I'm just going to cut it right off. Um, yeah, so super important when you um, bring home your groceries, what I do is I wash them right away before I put them in the fridge. I put them in a, um, well, I used to put them in a vinegar solution of the homemade apple cider vinegar. And now I'm adding just a little bit of soap to that too, because apparently that's what you're supposed to do these days. So we have some um, bok choy and some cilantro that we're gonna use here too. But I am going to, um, I'm gonna move this celery and I'm gonna turn this on so this heats up a bit and add a little bit of water because we are going to need the onion for our next thing. And um, so I'm just going to entertain you with being complicated here with everything all at once. And I'll be back in one second. didn't take too long so I grabbed two just in case because I bought quite a few when they were on sale and I put them in the house garage so they would stay cold and um, you know we're pretty lucky that the weather has warmed right up so I'm happy about that okay so I probably should get a real knife to cut this onion so the salsa, we've made the salsa many times before, and, um, and the, uh, what we've done, what I do, is you can ferment the salsa, and that, that really um, gets the, uh, it amps up the nutritional value big time, and it's so easy to do, me and my little tiny workspace here. So what you're going to do... Um, I really encourage you to do that to um, ferment the, uh, the salsa because it, it starts that natural probiotic bacteria growing. You know, it, it creates a lactic acid, which, which over a few days, you know, depending on how warm your house is, um, it turns into a probiotic, like a raw sauerkraut, and it feeds that natural... Um, intestinal bacteria that's just so so important for our immune system and uh, so what I do is I make the salsa and then you can put it in a jar and you can um, just leave it on the counter for a couple days right and so it will start to naturally ferment and you can still use it you don't have to wait you know you can have the salsa as fresh as possible and um, use it in the uh, you know right out of the jar but don't put it in the fridge right away and so that helps with the intestinal bacteria um, it helps with your gut biome which is so important for your immune system 
And so it's always, you know, for me, I've kind of gotten into the habit of fermenting the, um, you know, fermenting the salsa. And plus, bigger bonus is that it really, really amplifies the taste like you wouldn't believe. Um, okay, so if you guys don't like cilantro, you don't have to add it. I think it's really good to have the cilantro in there. The other thing that I add, well, this is a piece of my um, homegrown horseradish. I'm not going to put that in there, though. I am going to put a little piece of ginger in, too. Ginger's like my little secret ingredient in the, um, in the uh, salsa. And I'm going to add an extra little piece because it really, it really, um, the ginger in the salsa just, just brings the flavor out. It's just really quite amazing. Now you can add whatever you want to, um, if you wanted to add maple syrup or you want to add honey or whatever your sweetener is that you would like, um, go ahead and add that as well. And like I said, I have a few, actually I have several um, videos of my salsa. And most of the time, get my right spoon here, most of the time I've used the uh, hand food processor. Hey, Laura, hi. Do I have to put the lid on tight? No, you're not going to put the lid on tight. And in fact, I will show you what we're going to do with this. So I'm going to add some honey here. Yeah, you definitely don't want the lid on tight uh, when you're fermenting anything. And I wonder if I should move that onion out and get that in a little deeper. It's always so much fun working with new machines and I love this thing. I haven't had it very long but it's super awesome. And so what I um, what I usually have done is use the hand grinder and I use the hand um, food processor and I really like it because I found that any of the other machines that I have just make the salsa too mushy but I'm pretty liking this little guy because um, you've got a lot of control so it doesn't just turn it to mush, which is, uh, which is shocking to me, because most of them do. So you can you can pretty well. Um, I there's something about the blades, I think, because before, whenever I've tried this, it just goes to, you know, like mushy can salsa or bottled jarred salsa. But this. Uh, this is pretty good, and you can really control it. It's not grabbing the um, the cilantro very well, but it's a nice, you know, I can put that at the bottom after. But see, it's a nice um, texture. I think it's a really good texture for that salsa. Okay, my celery keeps on, <laughs> keeps on not knowing where to go. Here, celery. I know you're nice and clean. I don't want to get you dirty. I'll put you on the clean, fresh washed vegetables. Okay, so we're just going to put this in the jar. And uh, take that. We'll get the cilantro in afterwards. Uh, spoon. Okay, get the honey spoon. In. We'll put the honey spoon in. So we're going to put this in. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put this in the jar like you would any salsa recipe and you're going to um, put it on the counter I'll make another one here um, and what you're going to do is is it's different than doing a um, <laughs> try and talk and think at the same time oh yeah I'll put these guys in the bottom um, what you're going to do is you're going to, hey Darlene, hi, good morning. <laughs> so nice to everybody joining me. I really missed everyone the last couple weeks. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to put it in the jar and um, you're going to add some salt, which we're going to add some salt, and um, just leave it. If you don't have any specific fermenting lids, you can just put a paper towel or a clean cloth over the top like as if you were fermenting anything. Put a little stick around it so that the, you know, it's to keep the dust out and the bugs out. 
but to allow that lactic acid air to escape because it's going to create gases and fermentation, which is what we want. Um, so you're going to keep an eye on it. <clears throat> and um, um, you want to make sure, keep making sure that you've got, I know with salsate it's kind of weird, but you're going to try and make sure that it's underneath the liquid because when you're fermenting anything, um, anything that gets exposed to the air has, has that uh, tendency to grow bacteria, right? And so you do want um, the good bacteria, but you don't want mold. And so, um, okay, I'm just thinking, I put tons of garlic in there already. Um, I probably put enough of the honey, I put enough of the ginger for sure and cilantro and so I think I'm good with just tomatoes and maybe more peppers uh, and the salt but anyway so when you're putting it in the jar you're going to let that ferment for a while for a couple days and especially um, if you if you taste it and you keep checking it then you know for sure uh, that it's not molding right and so but when you take a little bit out, make sure you push the bits, these bits down. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, make sure you push all the bits down underneath the water, the liquid, because um, anything exposed to the air will have that tendency. And in the summer, you know, I noticed that the uh, bubbles were coming up like within a day or two, and my house is pretty cold, so it could take up to a week. Um, but I would check it every single day, put it somewhere where you're going to see it and check it. And then after three days, just when the bubbles start, it just enhances the, the whole, um, oh my gosh, the nutritional value is, uh, is totally amped up. And the flavor is, is like, you know, no other. Like fermented salsa, just, it brings out all the flavor of all the different um, vegetables and stuff. Um, it's just really super, super awesome. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, we're good. Um, yes. Okay. Oh, salt. That's what it was. Sometimes, you know, it's like anybody. Sometimes I just get so distracted that um, with talking and, and thinking. Thinking and talking and... Uh, food preparation and all that stuff all at once is sometimes a bit of a challenge for me, but I try anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? And actually, this is like the slow, slow, slow. Um, what you want is you want a um, heaping, I'm just going to take this apart here. <laughs> sometimes I'm prepared and sometimes I'm not. Being away from you guys for two weeks, um, I knew it would take me a few days to uh, get back into the um, being a little smoother, but then am I ever smooth? No. <laughs> Not going to happen. I just, I just do what I do and none of it is um, anywhere near perfect. <laughs> okay. But that's what's so fun is who cares? Okay. Awesome. Okay, so what you're going to do, I'm going to put this over here because we're going to move on to the next thing. It's so fun to have you guys hang out with me while I uh, do my thing. Okay. Okay, so you can see I kind of overdid this a little more. So it's got the um, more fluid, which is good. Yeah, it's good for fermenting, you know, it may not be so great in your salsa. It all depends how, um, you know, how watery you like your salsa. I tend to not, but it is, um, it is easier, I'll try not to clang too much. Um, it is easier to uh, ferment it when you have this liquid, right? You're going to push this down, okay? And actually because, um, be it's important, uh, be because I forgot to add salt to the first batch. And so the salt to be on the top half, you want to make sure that salt is everywhere. So I am going to give this a stir. Ideally, in a perfect world, you would put this in a bowl and you would mix it really well, like in one huge batch, or if you had a bigger food processor, 
you would do it all in one batch um, so you don't have to fuss around with this. But um, like I said, I get distracted easily. And um, so anyway, this is what we're doing. Okay, so you're going to try and get all these pieces under the fluid carefully. And then you're going to um, cover it like for you guys. Uh, what you can do, me and my mess, can you see past that? Um, what you can do is just cover it with a cloth and elastic, and uh, like I said, put it where you're going to see it, and then just keep watching for the bubbles, and after three days, it'll start to ferment. You can leave it longer as long as you keep an eye on it and make sure nothing molds. Like, ideally, what you would do is you would use one of these, these are um, fermenting weights, and you can, and they're made specifically for fitting in this jar. So this will hold, um, if you were doing like uh, chunks of tomatoes or um, carrots or anything else that you were fermenting, you would put this in and you would try and make sure all the little bits don't come up the side. And this will hold it down underneath so that the um, majority of it is under the water. It doesn't work as well with salsa, obviously. Um, so this, these, I'm, I've tried several, actually several many uh, fermenting lids, and lots of them are pretty good. But I'm really happy with this one. This one, you don't even need the weight in it. It's um, although the weight's nice, depending on what you're what you're fermenting. These things are um, called Easy Grip. I always have to look at the at the box because I always forget. I keep calling them Brilliante because that's the brand name. And they have a really cool um, grip on the side for opening it easy. And it has the vacuum thing. So you put this on. I'm really loving these. You know, I like I say, if you, if you want to just use a cloth and an elastic, that works too. You just have to keep a closer eye on it. The beauty of these guys is um, it has the little pump. And you can actually suck the air out so you put it on and you pull up and you keep sucking the air out like i've got quite a bit of space in there so take a few times but you can feel see you can feel when it's pulled all the air out and it has a little um tiny pinhole in it so that it, so that the um gas will escape like the fermentation so this is that's pretty handy if you really get into fermenting you buy these because they're really good um, if you're just playing around, get used to fermenting and just use a cloth or a paper towel or whatever. So I'm just going to set that there. The other thing is when you set this, I won't leave it where it is right now because um, depending on how high you fill it, they can bubble up and leach out. So I have created um, many, many stains by <laughs> having my fermentations leak out through the top. So put a dish under that and I will be doing that afterwards. So I'm going to leave that there. This is the other previous um, salsa that is fermented. This has been in the fridge for about three months, and it is amazing. I made a whole whack of it. I'm down to this much, but oh my god, the flavor is just awesome. And you can use it in, in anything, you know, anything that you're cooking. So we're going to um, we're gonna ignore my little mess here, and we're going to get on to uh, helping me make dinner. If you guys were into that, um, what we're going to do is um, um, I'm just going to scoot this to the side because I don't mind a little bit of tomato juice in my dinner, but I don't want, I mean, it would be a little weird to have tomatoes in this next dish, but a little bit is not going to hurt. Otherwise, in a perfect world, you would clean all this up and you would start with a clean cutting board and everything. But everything's washed already. So we're just mixing food. And um, I'm totally okay with that. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to start with celery and we're making, I'm being bad today, um, we're going to make a chow mein. Or no, yes, chow mein, not chop suey. Sometimes I get confused with that. I did wash the celery. Everything's been washed. Um, hands are clean. Utensils are clean, wash, 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 and I trimmed it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make a little chow mein, and the reason I say it's bad 
is because I am going to use like a noodle that's not gluten free. But every once in a while, it's just so much fun to eat, you know, things that are not as perfect, but that are so satisfying and yummy when you, um, when you want some comfort food. And I think around now we're all needing, <laughs> we're needing a lot of comfort food. I know it's, uh, it's, uh, definitely, um, you know, between the weather and everything else that's going on in the world, comfort food is a, is a good idea right now. And so that's what this is about. Whoops, there we go on the floor. Um, I'm cutting these very fine because, um, because I like them really fine in the chops, chow, nah, chow mein. I always want to say chow sweet. And so going to get these guys in here and this is quite a bit because I want it to be um, fairly veggie. I might add more than that, I'm not sure. Um, and now that I think about it, I, I'm not having onion in here because it's not the typical thing. So just grab my other things here we go. <laughs> We're going to do the um, the little uh, bean sprouts. Oh my gosh, my mind's going blank. So what I wanted to do is grab some mushrooms. We're gonna add some mushrooms to this. And um, I do like to add a few. These are the shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms are so good for you. You can buy them fresh pretty much anywhere. And um, <clears throat> they're really good for the immune system. Um, they have been used as an antiviral. So they're antiviral and we all need to uh, incorporate as much antiviral <laughs> everything that you can. That's a natural, natural food antiviral. You want to um, incorporate that into as much as you can, your food and your drinks and everything. So the shiitakes are super antiviral. They've actually been used in research for like HIV and that kind of thing. The reason I'm, I'm just going around the outside is because I do find uh, that they're a little bit chewy and uh, when they're dried they're kind of chewy and the center is like the stems super chewy so I save these and put them in tea and so um, the centers but they're so um, oh my gosh they've been used for like cholesterol you know helpful with cholesterol um, they say that they're anti-aging obviously I haven't been eating enough of them <laughs> And uh, so we're going to get those guys in there. I think that's enough of that one. I wanted to add some of the maitake mushrooms. Um, these guys are really um, quite exotic looking. And they're really, really good. They are also really good for your um, antiviral. They're antiviral as well. And uh, they've been used um, in natural cancer formulas. They've been used for um, balancing blood sugar and um, mm, cholesterol. Most of the mushrooms have all kinds of vitamins, minerals, like a, a, a specifically selenium, if I can say that right. And so I'm just rehydrating these because they're all dry. And, oh yes, and I have some of the um, oyster mushrooms that we um, harvested this summer. We found these and the oyster mushrooms are amazing. They're, they also have so many beneficial properties and they're very detoxing. They've got antioxidants, super detoxing. And, um, and so, uh, well, that's so sweet, darling. I missed everybody too. But you know, you, once you get into those dealing with the paperwork and especially taxes, you know, once, once your head's into that, I just couldn't stop because I knew if I, if I start having fun, <laughs> I get too distracted to go back and want to finish off the taxes, and I had to get that done. Anyways, um, okay, so we're just going to throw these guys in here. Oh, there was a little piece of tomato. Is that going to matter in my chow mein? Oh, well, nobody will notice that little tiny bit. Okay, so, um, and I buy a lot of these in the, um, <clears throat> in the winter. 
um, because they're available and they're usually much, much less expensive than, um, you know, your typical lettuces. I don't ever buy iceberg lettuce, but, you know, cheaper than romaine or, or um, gosh, you know, sometimes cheaper than, way cheaper than broccoli and cauliflower. My gosh, broccoli and cauliflower can be like so crazy expensive um, in the winter or, you know, different times. Like, who knows? Who knows what controls that? I don't know what controls that. Um, so, so what I'm going to do with this is, um, okay, mind on the chow mein. Okay, no cilantro in the chow mein. That's not going to work. Oh, yes, garlic. We need the garlic. We need some more garlic in the, um, in the chow mein. And uh, I have to concentrate here because I don't make this very often. I love it, but um, I do try and stay away from the gluten noodles. But like I said, right now is really a good time for comfort food. And so we're going to just go for it. Okay, so we're going to get these garlics here and try to leave them in chunkier pieces. Garlic so good. You know, I um, I think just from the the um, doing the paperwork that I hated to do so much, um, you know, kind of when you're stressed, it does take your immune system down. And I was feeling a little bit like, oh, you know, not so great. And um, you know, just take a piece of garlic and I just chew on it. <laughs> and uh, straight up, you know, I mean, you can have a <clears throat> a cracker or something else with it if you want. But I was just eating the garlic straight up and uh, and it really works to boost your immune system. Okay, I'm just looking at the beautiful ones and the beautiful ones can stay in the fridge a little longer. So I'm going to use the not as beautiful ones. The ones are because we're we need to be into um, food preservation because I don't know there's just so many rumors about what's happening with your food, which reminds me, uh, yesterday we had a wonderful comment um, by a person who was on the Facebook Live who is, um, who's in charge of the, um, oh my God, let's just keep falling, in charge of the, uh, uh, it's a farming, shelter farm, I think it's called shelter farm, and if Jane's on here, she might be able to, um, uh, give the proper name, because she's good at that kind of thing, but, um, he did put a comment, it was Guy, and he put a comment on yesterday with, uh, the name and the link, and I shared it on my Facebook here, uh, on how to order your, um, produce to be delivered from the farm all summer and I'm not sure when they're going to be starting but they have apparently they have all these different kinds of mushrooms as well so they're growing the mushrooms and they're going to be offering a box program this summer for Port Alberni and so if you guys want to make sure that you're going to get your vegetables this summer um, you can sign up for that uh, box delivery program, especially if you don't have a garden. It's just, it's a great way of, um, okay, I, I don't think that's too much. Is that too much? That might be too big. I, like I said, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to talk and, and think at the same time. I want these fine. I was, I was so careful to do my celery fairly fine. These guys need to be smaller. Don't forget what you're doing. Okay, so anyway, yeah, back to the box delivery program. Um, and support your local farmers. My gosh, uh, that's, your, that's your best food security, is to support your local farmers. Um, anything you can grow yourself, you really should, because um, it's super, super important. It's also um, rewarding and um, beneficial for your immune system to, you know, so uh, getting into nature, right? Getting your hands in the dirt and, uh, you know, doing all that kind of thing is so important and good for you. 
Okay, so we have our little bit of garlic. I'm going to add a little bit of water. And this is, this is actually my mother-in-law's recipe. So, yes, thank you, Shelter Farm. Yay. Um, this is my mother-in-law's recipe, and it was so good. And it was just like, I was thinking, oh, my God, there's like, seriously, not a lot of vegetables in it, but it's so yummy. Um, so this is my take on it. And I'm just looking for the other thing that I don't seem to have here, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be cooking this later or warming it up later. Um, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to have some kind of broth in here. Like a, um, I'll use one of those uh, veggie cubes that, that I get at Healthy Habits. They have the really nice um, organic veggie cubes. And so, or, or a veggie broth, any kind of broth. So you want a little broth in here. If you want, um, you, I find the veggie broth is, is usually enough. Um, but if you want, you can add a little bit of uh, tamari or a natural soy sauce. Tamari is a natural, naturally fermented um, soy sauce. You can add a little bit of that. I find I like to add that soy sauce right before serving. And so, um, so I would just add the veggie broth to this. And the veggie broth has pretty good, you know, a little bit of salt in it. So you can add a little bit extra if you want, and of course pepper, whatever you want. Um, but typically I like the pure flavor. And then what we're going to do, I almost forgot here, is um, put our bean sprouts in. And um, that's another thing. That's another thing that I want to do um, that I haven't done because I was so focused on that paperwork is um, um, sprout. <laughs> oh my gosh, my mind went blank. Yes, it starts sprouting. So I'm going to start that pretty quick too. So sprouting your, you know, you can get the radish seeds and um, mustard seeds and all that kind of stuff and sprout them and that's really good. Okay, I'm going to turn this off because this is just prepped for my dinner tonight. Um, and I don't want it too cooked. I just wanted those celeries to be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit softer and to rehydrate the mushrooms. So basically, with a little tiny piece of tomato in there, um, basically that's it. You're going to uh, just add your, your terrible noodles to it. <laughs> You're going to add your terrible noodles to it, your comfort food, mix it together with the veggie broth, and that's about it. So, um, and I'm sure there are other recipes. Oh, there's another thing. I forgot. I don't usually have this. I don't usually buy it, but I did just to make it um, kind of like if you wanted to, I love to show people products with, um, for alternative uh, choices because you know, a lot of the chicken that people buy has antibiotics and hormones and all kinds of things, and, and um, I don't do that. I mean, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't do that. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but this is a really great um, tofurkey. It's a plant-based chicken, and so it's all vegetables. Um, and I don't know what else. There's probably some soy in there. But anyways, um, if you wanted to have that authentic flavor, this stuff's pretty good, and you can shred it up and put it in there, too, if you wanted to make it like a chicken chow mein. And um, anyway, so I just thought I would show you, because a lot of people want to go to a plant-based um, lifestyle or diet, and they don't really, um, they're not really sure of how to do that. So it's a good graduating step to, um, to making it taste and look like what you're used to. Uh, but at the same time, changing it up to be a little bit healthier. And so, um, and depending on what it is, right? There are, these are treats. These aren't um, a staple. Uh, it's just a treat and, like I said, sort of a transition food. So you can add that if you want. <clears throat> but um, that's it. So thank you, you guys. That was really fun. I will let you go. We'll see you tomorrow morning. I look forward to your comments and... and um, and suggestions and we'll see you tomorrow check out my used my instagram and my youtube channel and have a really great day